Hi everyone, I'm Daniela Barosler and this is Unordinary Me at Ordinary, where we discuss the extraordinary experiences of everyday people. If you would like to continue the discussion after this interview, feel free to search for our private UMO group on Facebook. Today, I'm really excited to be chatting with Anna Stone. Hi. Hi, so glad you could join me. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, um, Anna, um, I'd like to get a little bit of background information about who you are and your childhood and, you know, where you came from. Okay. Um, I grew up in Fresno, California, Central California. Um, it's really hot there. Yeah, uh, I'm familiar. Much, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and, you know, I grew up in conservative, very religious household. Um, yeah, definitely. And um, I stayed there until I was 22. And I moved to Los Angeles for a job um, working as a researcher in a neuroscience laboratory um, with UCLA and the VA hospital um, in 2001. So and I've been here in Los Angeles ever since so for 22 years now. Oh, you're local. I'm like, oh, are you? 40, I'm 40 minutes away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right on. Yeah, I'm in Glendale. Awesome. So you went to a lot of school and everything you're, I mean, I did, I, 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 I graduated high school early, a year early. And I went to, I started college when I was 15 and, um, I just, I hated high school. Um, I hated it. So I wanted to get out. So, um, yeah, I, I was really into science. Uh, for some reason, my grandfather was a science teacher. That's probably why. And, um, and I was good at it. So I went to school for science and then I got, before I graduated though, I got offered this job. So I did not finish my bachelor's when I moved here. I just finished my bachelor's actually in 2019. And then I got my master's and I'm on my second master's and PhD right now. So I really went full force <laughs> to school later. Oh my but goodness. Um, yeah, I, but I was doing um, biological science in lab for about 20 years. Wow. Um, so did you um, have experiences as a child that were like clairvoyant or unusual yeah um so again i'm religious home right like very really my um we lived with my grandparents with what like, religion were they baptist baptist okay yeah so no drinking no dancing like um <laughs> no rock and roll music like very strict um, my god it's like the movie footloose it was horrible uh yeah <laughs> it was bad um i i i i didn't at eight when I was eight, I said, this is uh, not for me. Um, and thus I became the black sheep of the family uh, at that moment. Um, I literally did, <laughs> um, but I, I couldn't take it. I hated it. So I, yeah, my house was the, like literally everybody in the house, even my grandparents saw stuff in that house I, all the time. And it was really uncomfortable and unnerving um, to be there. In fact, I recently sold the house and um, the people moved out after six months that moved in. So like, I know it wasn't just us <laughs> like now, um, but yeah. When I you sold it, that. did you have to disclose that? Um, a company bought it. So oh. no, <laughs> they bought it to demo it. So um, it was it was a teardown, but the land, it's the land. It's not the house, it was the land. Um, Fresno is notorious for Indian ground situations. So that's <laughs> pretty probably what it was. Um, we had like, yeah, a lot of things. I, my mother was, difficult with her identity of like being able to see auras and ghosts I guess um and but then being religious so she had a really bad time with that um and I watched that play out yeah what do you mean a bad time like people were giving her a hard time or she struggled she struggled internally I think um because she like on her side of the family they talked about it and they were like okay like okay with it but then when she married into my father's family they were not okay with it and um you know it so yeah I think it caused her some stress probably um as a kid I remember her just keeping quiet about things like seeing her um, I saw like when my grandfather passed away um I will never forget this she was standing at the at the stove making chocolate pudding and and I she was pouring it in the bowl and she just <laughs> like this and dropped it and was like he's gone she said that and like literally 10 15 seconds later my uncle Terry comes out and he goes we just lost papa like and I I'd seen it I'm like I think I was an eight or nine and I I was like oh because it scared me because she made this gasp 
and dropped the stuff everywhere and like putting one everywhere but she knew like she knew like it something happened she I don't know what she experienced but I saw her experience something and like then it was validated right after that so clearly like there was something yeah I'm um, going on with her and the house and yeah and myself as a kid but I think I trauma blocked it like so as a child you didn't talk about it and you didn't tell anyone um I was terrified in that house we all were um my brother too it, it, it was just like that feeling you needed to run you know uh something's right behind you kind of thing um and 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 always something out of the corner of your eye showing up but yeah we would keep it because my nana would freak out like she would know that's of the devil stuff like she was very very religious so that was us making up stories to you know inviting the devil in or something like that you know so no we didn't talk about it um to amongst ourselves my brother and I yes all the time but yeah um so going from that and then I don't know what I know you had an NDE experience and um I don't know how old you were or like anything that leads up into that right well sure like I pay okay, so my life has been very logical like I've gone on the path of logic because of growing up in that house that house, it scared me I'm not gonna lie like it's not fun it was not fun it was not cool um haunted house is not fun ever and um so no I was like this is not real I'm gonna go science because that science says this doesn't exist right so I can now find reasons to not believe my experiences and so I did that for many years but um unfortunately everywhere I moved was haunted like literally it's, it continues happening to this day um and so Kelly because you're sensitive right yeah, yeah no I, I realized about a year and a half ago someone said have you ever stopped to consider it's not the house the house is it to you and I was like yeah thanks yeah you're like so yeah and I now I understand that but um I didn't so it was driving me crazy because I'm having these sometimes scary experiences my little girl I had my daughter at um, my daughter when I was 18 she had experiences and I would tell her like she was making up stuff. I did the same thing that my oh, no. grandma, I did. I, I, I'm, I'm ashamed. Um, I did, I admit it, but I did not do that to my daughter. I did not tell I, her that anything was ever not real. Oh my gosh. I'm an, I, I, like, I did it briefly because I was so, I was stuck in the, I don't believe it, mm. like brainwashed myself. So I, if she had it happening, it, it, that's, you know, that doesn't jive with what I'm telling myself. So <laughs> I did for a moment, but it got to the point where it literally, we could not I couldn't say that anymore. So of course, but yeah, she still holds that over my head all the time, <laughs> like <laughs> all the time. So, um, this is like, I had my near death experience when I was 38, I believe 30, it was 2016. Um, right. 2016. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, up until that point, I literally was just in denial. I, I read tarot. Okay. So I've been into tarot cards. My, since I was 12, I started reading tarot cards. Um, but again, somehow I managed to like talk myself out of it being anything other than just chance or whatever. You know, like I, I always had an excuse for everything, science-based excuse. Well, I mean, tarot decks come with a book. So right, you right, right, right. It. Exactly. Like, this I'm card not... means that. It doesn't mean right. anyone can do this. Anybody can read these. And and yeah, and, and that is true. Anybody can use that book and read those cards. Um, that is absolutely factual. So like I just kind of downplayed the esoteric aspect of it um and just told myself you know no there's and there's no life after death so there's no god or whatever like this is all nonsense oh so you went from yeah being raised baptist to yeah. that's atheist yeah i mean yeah i mean pretty much like I, I think i was more like i like i was like i don't believe in this guy in the clouds with a tablet keeping track of our sins i think there's something because as a scientist the amount of intricacies that are within our existence is insane and there's no way it could just be i in my opinion by chance and the people i worked with all were you know all the same vein like they were like you know no this is too perfect to be so you just described god in a very santa way with the list and the <laughs> i know i know i know like, i mean like for me you know that's what i grew up hearing is that like you know everything we're doing is being monitored and like i'm gonna go to hell like this and that the other thing i'm gonna go to hell for this i'm gonna go to hell for that like it was just all fear stuff. And I just, I was not about that. And, um, and I just didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense. Like it didn't make sense that we're supposed to love each other, but then it's all fear based. Like, uh, like it just didn't jive. So yeah, sure. There's something, do I know what it is? No, you know, like, um, so I was like that, like, I'll believe it when I see it basically. Mm. That's, um, a, that's agnostic. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I got, I got, yeah, it, it's, I got my comeuppance on this. So, um, you know, yeah, like, so when I passed away for six minutes, uh, I, yeah, like I wasn't expecting anything. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting to die first of all, but, um, yeah, so I, what, what happened? Why, why'd you die? I had an <laughs> ectopic happened? pregnancy. Um, what is it? An ectopic pregnancy. That's that in were, the fallopian tube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was bleeding. I bled out half of my, over half of my blood supply. So I, I, like I had literally made a joke earlier that day about bleeding to death. And then the next thing I remember, I woke up in the hospital. Um, I fainted. I don't really know. We don't talk. I mean, I never really asked what happened actually. I, now that I think about it, um, other than I fainted, that's what I heard. So I get, I guess I got taken yes, in the ambulance, like I'm pretty sure. And like, I wake up and, um, they're doing a blood transfusion and I was freaking out about that. Cause it was creeping me, like creep me out to think of other people's blood going at me. Ugh. So, but then at that moment, there's a thing that happened where I realized something's very wrong, like very wrong. My body felt so wrong. Um, it felt like the best way I can describe it is like, if you ever dabbled in substances as a kid, a teenager in high school or college, like if you imagine anything you ever took, like all at the same exact time, all hitting you at the moment, like, but times a million, like the most intense, like something's coming over me and uh, taking over my faculties, like completely. And I, it, it was this overwhelming stress feeling. I can't even describe. I felt like I was going to explode from the inside out. Like literally like there was this tension building up and I realized I'm dying. Like I knew I had a conscious thought I was dying. I knew it. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And the second I thought that and it was like too much I was just boom like out of the body out of my body and um and I was very aware of this situation happening I was like oh my god like oh no oh, okay oh well uh shit that sucks that was my one thing that I said out loud well out loud to myself I said oh shit that sucks that was that it. sucks because you died yeah that I'm looking at myself felt. yeah I'm looking at myself and I'm like I'm not even 40 you know, um, yeah. I wasn't upset, but I was just like, eh, you know, like very blase. Like there was, it was very just factual. Um, and I watched, like I floated up to the ceiling, like literally like a balloon getting hit, like let go in the house, you know, and it just bounces there. I was, I was like literally bouncing, kind of hitting the ceiling. And I realized that I don't have a body, but like I'm me, my personality is there. Cause I just said like, shit, that sucks. And that's something I'd say. Um, so that's weird. And I'm thinking this, you know, um, and I can see it in 360 degrees, like it, like, I don't know how to really describe that, but like, there's no bones in your head because you don't have a head. You don't have eyes either, but somehow I'm seeing and like everything, um, you, um see yourself like your own form at all. No, 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 no body, but so you couldn't see light or anything from, no, your no, okay. but I felt it. Um, I felt that I was form like had a shape kind of um I, I had a definition too there was definition like there was an end to me like but it was huge like it was like I it and it got bigger later um but like I was in the whole room basically it was at, at the top of the ceiling of the whole room taking up this whole space and um yeah I was watching them um like say oh we're losing her kind of stuff and bringing the cart and then starting to do so I'm out of my body before I died like right like I'm out before okay that. yeah and I thought that that well if they were bringing the cart your heart was not yeah, beating not, not yeah I was flat but I mean I hadn't flatlined yet I was just the, I could hear the beeps but like they were very few and far between mm -hmm. um and then they worked on me for I don't know how long like a while but not crazy um to the point where one of the techs or whatever he was surgical assistant or whatever he was like we're giving up now she's only 38 you know and um God. the doctor said oh well yeah but look she's got like she's got she's a former addict and she's like you know what do you expect like he said something negative like that and at this point I'd been clean and sober for eight years so I and I I remember thinking was that necessary like that like that comment came out like was that necessary for you to say that but I wasn't mad you know like I was just like 
Oh, I don't think yes. somebody's choices in their life should dictate how hard a doctor tries to save your life. Right. Well, that's kind of what happened. I mean, that is what that is what happened. Um, the guy was just like, whatever. So I didn't, but I had no feelings about it. I didn't wasn't like, oh my God, you're gonna stop. No, nothing like that. I was just like, eh. you know, like wow. that's that. And then I'm like, oh no, my kids. And then this moment of like, uh, and my children. So and the second I thought of my oldest, who was like 19 at the time, I guess she was in Fresno. I'm in LA. So she's 200 and something miles away. And, um, the second I thought about her, I was in, they were just there with her in her classroom and she was taking a exam. And, um, I was like, okay, she's fine. Okay. Now what about Lucy? Who's just going to be two. And, um, I'm back in the hospital. She's playing in the little waiting room area. I'm sitting there with my ex-husband, like playing and I'm like, okay, she's gonna be fine. And then I went back and saw the myself and they called time of death and then they stopped working on me and I was just laying there and they just turned their backs and started filling out paperwork I guess but then I'm like looked over to my left right and then that's when I was like I'm somewhere else now like okay if I look to the right I'm in the hospital if I look to the left I'm somewhere else and this is a new place um but it was familiar I've of course never been there right but it was familiar um it was like a room I guess it was space it was all white um and there was nobody there I didn't see a tunnel there wasn't um any ghosts there was no spirits of people I know um it was just me but it wasn't just me it was me I didn't see anyone but I could feel all of the other energies intermingling with my being like my form and um so yeah like there was I'm surrounded by people I can't see, you know, like I'm like beings that I can't see. I'm just, we're all one thing right now. Like it's like where I'm individual right now because I got to deal with this situation right now, but I'm very aware that I'm going to sync up with this like energy, collective energy, you know, afterwards. So, um, and then out of nowhere, like, I don't know where she came from, but uh, there's a woman standing there waiting for me and I look and it's me. Uh, but like a little different, like older. I'm not older. Um, she looked di- a little different. Like some of the lines on her face were not the same as mine. Like, um, like a, like she just had. She was. Just, it was me, but it was like a different, like a me that lived different lives. Like, and so therefore had different little like battle scars or something on their face. You know, like the lines that we get. Mm-hmm. And um, I like floated, I guess, over to her, and I was just like looked and I heard the one word that I whole interaction was one word and it was just nope like that she said to me in my head nope and I like I'm like oh okay right I'm going back you know and I knew like immediately what it meant that I was going back and then I looked at my body again I'm like how the hell am I gonna fit in that body (laughs) like I there's and I was think for protesting like how am I gonna fit And, and then I got sent back and it was so painful like it hurt so bad like it was um that was a tangible thing that I to this day feel like when I talk about it I actually can still remember how it felt and it was like putting toothpaste back in the tube you know like it was like it and it and I went in through my navel like I I got sent back in through my belly button and I was like what I was as I'm going through it I'm like my belly but I was thinking to myself like I'm going through my why and that's when I saw a tunnel because now I'm going in and I see the tunnel and then I have been out of air for over like about six minutes now, at least. Um, and so I shot up just upright on the bed, gasping like for that first breath of air for the past six minutes um, and scared the crap out of everybody in the room. Um, and I knew what had happened immediately. Like I, I was like, oh my God, I died oh my God, I, I died. Holy crap. Like, and then I turned to the doctor. I'm like, did you say this thing about, did you say about my previous drug use? And he was just looked at me like, like he didn't want to get in trouble. Um, and I wasn't asking for that reason. I wasn't asking to try to, you know, yeah. nail him. I just needed to know, did I witness what I think I just witnessed? Like, um, because I immediately knew what the implications were. Like I knew that everything I, been telling myself for the last you know 38 years is is a lie and that holy crap there's um way more stuff going on than I ever imagined 
uh, happening. And also, oh my God, I just died, you know, like, so um, I had to ask him like five, six times before he finally was like, well, I'm sorry, you were like, I'm like, it's not that. Did you just tell me? Did you say, I just need to know. He's like, there's no way you could have heard that. That's what he said. And I was like, well, I did. Like I did. So, and he, he's like, I, I, he was, and then the one guy looked like he was going to have a heart attack. The, the younger one that had asked why we were going to stop working on me. He was like, I mean, cause I was still hooked up to lead, right? I still had all the sensors on, but there was no beeping to warn them that I was coming back. So like, it was just, they were standing there with their backs to me and like, you know, Terrible. Well, that's curious because you probably died from loss of blood, but like, were you alive now with still like less blood? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was. I still was in that. Had that transfusion machine that was still there. So, um, yeah, I had to stay for a minute, like recuperate, and um, you know, but I was fine. Like, I got released that day. Like later, about eight hours later, probably, probably about eight hours. Yeah, like I got released. So I went home. Eight hours. Yeah my insurance. Wow. <laughs> um, so, um, I went home and, you know, and then it started to like, really hit me. Like, um, what the hell happened? And, uh, like just how I was upset with myself that I wasn't more upset about my, my kids, like where the, well, who's going to take care of them? Like, like, um, who's going to take care of them? Like, my gosh, my oldest daughter's dad passed away when she was nine. Um, like, like what, what, I got it. I can't have my life like this. Like I've got to, things have to change. Like, I don't know how this like all went down this. How did I not know about this pregnancy? Like, you know, all of the things I had been like not taken care of that I should have probably known better, you know, like should have gone to the doctor after like a week of bleeding, like, you know, um, and I didn't. And like, I just was really irresponsible. And so I need, I knew that that had to change. Um, but I was really mad that I wasn't more upset about my kids. Like that I was like, you were shaming yourself, for, like yep. feeling guilty for not feeling guilty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel guilty. I, I, I wasn't like, Oh God, you know, it was just like, they'll be fine. Literally just super flat affect. Like just, they'll yeah, be fine. You were also not connected to your own body. Right. <laughs> like it wasn't just your daughters. It was like the whole life. It was right. Right. Like just being a mother. It, it, and I know that now, like, I, I understand now that I knew I wasn't staying there. Like, I knew that this was a thing. This was like my plan, like backup plan, I guess, maybe that I had made previously in, in the case that I went off rails and, and was out of control, like that I would have this reset. And it was, in fact, a reset. I, I was drunk, like idiot. Um, every day before this, I was drinking like crazy. I'd quit drugs like um prescription drugs but i replaced it with alcohol and um do, you, um do you think that you were using the drugs and alcohol to numb your clear abilities because you were in a denial well i mean i think maybe like earlier on yeah but the um drugs i was to do was like oxycontin from back uh, pain from a doctor prescribing i didn't want to be addicted to that stuff ever it was a nightmare um so it wasn't like I didn't do it on purpose. Like, like there wasn't like a drug I was taking for fun. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know? you taking um, it to it was, yeah. yeah. But yeah, before that, possibly, um, because I, I didn't realize, I realized a lot of things now that I didn't realize before, like a hundred percent, um, about like those abilities and things. And, and I, had, um, I had a couple just questions. Sure. Um, when you were the, you said you were a being as big as the room. And that you felt other beings were there, but you didn't see them. Mm -hmm. And you said that you could tell that you would be part of them as a collective. Mm -hmm. Would you still be, could you tell if you were still going to be like merging energy or were your energies going to be like just touching, you know, at the borders of your I mean, yeah, like individual? So it's like, this is the analogy that I came back with from that. It's like, mm -hmm. we're all individual drops of water, right? Like mm -hmm. individual unto ourselves. But when we are together, we're the sea of consciousness. Like, so it's like we're individuals, like whales and dolphins, they have that pod mind and then they have the individual mind. They have that part of the brain that lets them think up and have the in sync motions and all of that stuff when they're swimming in their pod. Like a collective so conscious. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. It was 
like all of the um experience like Anna Stone's experience as a person on earth was going to go sync up to that collective and download like I guess you know be like down like uploaded or whatever um is what I took from it like it was and no I, I I can't tell you if we like I don't know anything past six minutes right like I maybe we stop ex- maybe my personality would have went away I don't know because I was not there longer than six minutes right that's all I can well remember. but you've had hauntings your whole life yeah. and well, those were I'm, individuals right that were, I don't know now I'm confused oh, you so bad about that like because <laughs> but it's more confusing to me now because um you know like if I know what happened. I I saw what happens like when we go on the other side. So why are there ghosts? Like that shouldn't happen. So like, but so now I'm like, okay, well now what are they? (laughs) So, you know, but I have my idea about that now too. So I think it makes sense and more sense actually. Um, What are, what's your idea about why there are other dimensions? It's like the other dimensions that are like right up against us and they can just like mess with us because they're maybe they're more advanced and they know it. So they can just kind of mess with us. I don't know. Or it's just things that happen to be touching like really close to each other. And so we get a glimpse of it because we can see through it, the veil's thin. Like, um, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about this sometimes when he talks about the multiverse and how like, it's like if you had two bubbles, like you blow bubbles at soap bubbles and they come together and then they can merge into like one and then separate again. Like I maybe that's it. Like that makes more sense because now- Do you think the ghosts are a separate- uh dimension that's bubbling right. yeah like like the astral plane right like the um the because we are in like you know our dream state like wherever we go in our dream state i think maybe that's like where they are i don't know it's really complex that's where the ghosts are is on the astral plane yeah i think so yeah and, and where I mean, do you think where do you think you went though it you said it was like a room but it was light and then yeah. was it astral was it a a different bubble oh it wasn't the astral I've been to the astral from other things um I this was not that this was a way this was a place that was like um super chill like I mean I was like I knew it very well like I was very familiar with where I was um it was home like to me right. that's why you went there is because you were familiar and you just went boom autopiloted home um, right and but, I had to, but why don't the other ghosts why don't they um jettison to where they are from or home or whatever unless they just don't know maybe maybe I mean but if I'm being honest I didn't think I knew either because I literally was denying all of this stuff so I mean I guess at a soul level like maybe um maybe it's a newer soul thing like I don't know you know maybe if you're newer incarnation I, I'm not sure I just don't, I, I just, I have more questions now than I have answers, um, <laughs> um, which is the good, other, I think, you know, I don't want yeah, the answer. The other question was about the you you saw that said, you said it had different lines, like, mm-hmm. it, I'm just called you an it. Um, yep. She had different lines, like um, different wrinkles than you have. Yeah. Um, do you think this was your, like what they call a higher self yeah. or? Yeah. Um, I, and I've seen her before. I've, I've had an interaction with her before. And I, and I realized this literally about a couple months ago when I was telling the story of when I had taken this um, drug called Datura, which is like 10 times stronger than ayahuasca. And um, it's uh, like, Never heard of it. It grows on, it's Jimson weed. Okay. It's, do not do it. Nobody. It's like that blue flower. Yeah. yeah it's like, it's so, it's so bad. I can't believe I'm alive from that. But um, it like, I was 14. Okay. I was dumb kid and I did it and um, it was like three days of that and one of the days I went to the bathroom and in the mirror (laughs) I had black hair and a mohawk at the time because I was a goth kid in the in the nine early 90s and um there was a woman standing in the mirror it was me it was her and at at, like she's about 35 you know and she's like Anna what did you do to your hair and just kind of scolded me a little bit and I was like who are you old lady and I threw a wet washcloth at the mirror and I ran out of there because it scared me like I was like you know so you that you really walked in the bathroom or do you think you walked in like on the astral because I've heard of people astral traveling and looking in the mirror and they look different yeah like that stuff was so bad like um I I all I know is that I saw her and I and it hit me like a ton of bricks about two months ago when I was telling that story to somebody and then I was like oh my god it was how did I not understand? How did I not see this before? Like, so she was there when I was, 
like ball, you know, crazy as a kid. And then again, I saw, so it's the second, second time for sure that I've interacted with her. So yeah, my higher self, whatever you want to call it. Um, the one that's lived all the lives, I guess, you know, all of the li- timelines, I guess she's lived in. Um, so like I went there to get something back. I'm pretty sure because when I came back, I was different. Like anyone that knows me will tell you that that is true. Like every single person that I was friends with, I've known all are like, who are you? Like, um, what, wow. Like you're totally different. And I am, um, like you have, I, a, you have a new personality entirely. Um, I mean, no, like, like I'm still like me, but the way that I view things and the way that I operate is completely different. Like I, I had like, a I like a, t- a rough time growing up. Right. So like I, and, and I kind of, I guess kind of just fell on that, like as a, a crutch of like, well, my life is crap because this is what happened to me in the past. Um, and so I just kind of like sank into that victim mentality. Um, and there was chaos after chaos after chaos in my life constantly. And it was just nonstop. And to the point where people like didn't want to hang out with me anymore because it was just so much drama around me. And I wasn't even like looking for it. It would just find me. Um, but that, all that stopped. It stopped with the drinking. Like the minute I got home, the first thing I wanted to do was drink, right? Because, you know, I was dr- a drunk. So I What tried. a day, right? What a day you had. <laughs> I did. I know I needed to drink. If I ever needed to drink, it was now. Um, but I couldn't do it. I tried, I literally like went to drink it and it just became not liquid anymore. It became foam in my mouth and it just foamed up and I I have a texture issue. So like I, it was not happening. So I tried a different drink and that same thing happened and a different drink and the same thing happened. And I was like, well, crap. Like, I guess I'm not drinking. And that was it. That that was your higher self is giving you some spiritual and abuse. (laughs) Right. Right. I mean, I'm so grateful for that because it literally cured my alcoholism in six minutes like I'm dying for six minutes I I don't drink now so and that's continued on this whole time um and I'm so grateful because that stuff was horrible for me like I was very bad um and and then also I came back with this I've got to do something like I had this fire on like lit about like being a teacher all of a sudden now I people had told me you should be a teacher and I don't know why they would have ever said that to me um I was a terrible student I I ditch school all the time in high school I hated it so much um but but you hated it so much that you um graduated early I know that That, is exactly that means you were doing really good no 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 I I I had failed and then at the last minute like I realized that college was kind of fun um and the guy I had a teacher that forced me to do the college thing she like Miss Spencer from Bullard High she was an amazing science teacher she took me and at 10th grade and said I think you should take a class at night at city college. And I was like, what? I was going to drop out. And she's like, I don't think you should do that. I think you should take a class. And um, I was like, why would I want to do that? What, what? Like, you're crazy, you know? And um, she's like, just, you know, just let's do a bet. Like, you know, she, a wager, whatever. And um, she was right. Um, I took music appreciation in one class and I was in love. I was like, oh my God. Oh, I hate high school. How do I get out of this? So I went and I, petition for um you know uh early release <laughs> and um homeschool and I did <laughs> all like of a prison classes. thing isn't yeah, it yeah <laughs> I know um I, I did all of my I think I did 22 classes that year um to make up the ones I had failed previously and stuff and I graduated 4.0 as class of one October 5th 1995 so um and I like I I yeah like I was I'm out so I but I was not a good student I hated high school I I got bullied a lot and stuff so I didn't like it being a teacher was never something I wanted to do, but suddenly I had to be a teacher. And the next thing I know, I got a job as a teacher. I don't even remember applying for this job. I swear to God, I don't know how I got it. I wasn't qualified. Um, and I started teaching biology and um, turned out to be really, really good at it. And um, it became my career that I've had till to now. Um, I teach college now. I don't teach high school anymore. Thank God. But um, I, I, um, yeah, I started teaching and then I started being of service to other people. And I started to see in my students, they were all, I worked at a school for kids that um, were kicked out of the district. So um, they were, you know, either their needs were too great for the school to handle or their behavior was too much. Um, but they were my kids. Like they were my tribe. Like I re- really related to them very well and I loved it so much. Um, and I started to just, give back 
and like take all the stuff that I had previously kind of used as an excuse to be a certain way and turn that into like helping them and their parents understand each other. Like I started being like a mediator, the counselor, like all of those roles just started happening um, for me. And I'm still friends with many of the parents and the students like that I had at that school. Um, and, you know, super rewarding. Um, I never would have done that ever otherwise. Like I, I can't imagine where I'd be right now if I hadn't died, honestly. I, I, I think I would not be in a good spot. Um, well, I think, yeah, maybe you, uh, maybe you stepped in on your own self and we're like, nope, you're going off the rails. You need um, to go this way. Yeah, I actually, like I, to my friends, I call it my karmic bitch slap. <laughs> I actually like that a lot. <laughs> I was like, this fact, is my I hear a title. Yep. Like I am, what are you doing? You got a new little kid. Like what, you know, like I have, my girls are 19 years apart in age. Okay. So I started all over with my little one and now I'm acting like an idiot. Um, this is not okay. This is not acceptable. Um, you know, I, you? I have to get it together. And this was, I learned things the hard way always. Yeah. So did you, um, when you heard the word nope mm -hmm. from your own self, yep. and you knew that you had to go back. Were you upset about having to go back or did you try to protest at all, except about the body size? Um, I was like, in my head, it was like, you know, like, no, I, but I not really a protest, but just like crap. I knew it was coming. Like I knew already, I guess. So like, and yeah, the nope thing, that one word though was like, it was a zip file is like how I put it. It was a zip file that got put in my head that now keeps downloading contents all the time. I don't know how else to put that, but it, that's how it is. It's like things keep coming up that like from this experience that I keep getting information from like all this stuff. Like I figured out why I, why this happened. I had to go retrieve part of myself that like it's been fragmented from trauma as a kid, like, and pick that up. That was my drive. My drive had been missing, like my drive was lost. And so I went and I got it back. And that's what I did. That's what I was doing. But you it. think the one word was a download as opposed to you're just now receiving more information from your higher self. But I, I think it's like both way. like a communication tool, like like it was like, you know, they put in the like the the, the Wi-Fi, maybe <laughs> like they'll put it in so that I would listen. So that's the other thing too, is like I realize now that my stream of consciousness that I have in my head, right? Um like I have like five streams of consciousness going at any time, like given time talking all over each other and, and keeping track. So that's not normal, I guess. Um, telepathic, like you're receiving telepathic no, like messages. I just talk to myself all day long, all day. Oh, okay. Even as I'm talking, I'm still in my head talking. So like um, I can do that and I like very easily and I can hear like in a crowded place, I could hone in on one person's conversation and hear over everybody else's. That's always been a thing I've been able to do, but I didn't realize that when you hear things from like your higher self or whatever, it's in your voice. It's not in someone else's voice. I'd always thought that when you see a medium or whatever, talking to spirits that, that it's, they're talking to somebody they can see and like it's a different voice. That's what I thought. So this experience well, made me realize it's not always what it is. It's like your voice because. Yeah. I think when you receive information telepathically, it is probably your voice, but if you're clairaudient, Oh, yeah. it would yeah. be a different voice right? so that, that yeah so i'm that have that's the other thing is the clear audience like um so, so i'm i'm talking about like the one in your head you know like when you get information like stuff i would always say was just my imagination because it came up in my head in my voice right so it wasn't anything super interesting it was just happenstance i didn't get it that like no that's literally you're being you're connected and you're getting in, information like now i see it and I'm like, oh my gosh, duh. But back then I didn't at all. I just thought it was just, I thought everybody was like that too. And I thought everyone would talk to themselves. Okay. The fact that they don't is really crazy to me. I, I got to just say that really quick. The fact that not everyone has an inner monologue is so. What weird. do you mean? I thought everybody has an inner monologue. No, no they do not. That is. That's, isn't that how you think? Right. Or read or read, right? Yeah. Read. read. Yeah. Remember those kids in school that read out loud when it was silent reading time under their breath? That's why. I don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah, I never uh, considered that. Yeah, no, they don't. It's not. So it's about 50, 50, 50% 50 of people about that have an inner monologue where we talk to ourselves and we say like, what am I going to wear today? Blah, blah, blah. Like whatever, you know? 
No, and I thought I, everybody had that first nope. of all. And sometimes that thing will keep me awake at night. Right. Yes. So this hurt me when I found this out. It was so mind blowing to me. I was like, there's people that go to the movies and you know, like Forrest Gump, how it's narrated, you know, and we'll think like, that's so weird. Why is he talking like that? And, and like, don't understand that it's the guy being the character, like narrating his life because they don't have that. And that's what this article was about it. And I was like, what? And, and it, so, yeah, they, they, they think in other, in images instead of words. So instead of words, it's like math or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, but it's like 50%. Oh, okay. Of well, this is news to me. And I, I know just also I new articles about it. I had suffered from insomnia for a long time. And that voice is what will keep me awake. And yeah. I learned that I can't even finish the sentence. If I want to sleep, I have to cut myself off. I can't even think, don't finish that sentence. You can't even say that sentence, but pictures are allowed. The pictures will turn into dreams yeah. and, and then sleep. But the constant narrative will not. The narrative will not. Um, yeah. So that's like, you know, it's not abnormal, but not everybody has it. So I think that's just crazy. But, um, you know, it's, it's really weird to me. But I've never um, heard that before. So yeah, I'll, I can you, prove uh, that you're a scientist. And <laughs> no, I can send you this. Like, there's so many articles. I had no idea. Like, I had no idea anything existed like that. But I guess it's totally a thing. And I, I can't imagine it personally. It's really foreign to me. But um, okay. So yeah, I'm assuming that your I'm assuming that your ideas about the afterlife changed. Yeah. Oh my gosh. From, yeah, yeah. From nothing, like, right? <laughs> so this caused a big crisis for me, like a big one. I mean, I'd already had a crisis anyway. I had this inner like conflict with the fact that I liked things like witchcraft and tarot cards and those things interested me, but I was also science based, and those were incongruent things, and in, in my opinion, at that before this. Now I understand that they're absolutely not incongruent, that they're absolutely one and the same, that science and magic are both the same thing. They're just a different lens put on it um, because we don't have any understanding of how things work. Like we really don't. We say we do, but we're lying. Um, science has a like, grasp on some things, um, but we always will say something's not real if we don't know about it enough, right? You know, like that's, that's our go-to is like, it's not real, it doesn't exist. Science, you have to be able to get the same result. Right. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Repeatedly, that's and that's just impossible, isn't it? It is with the with the technology we have currently. Yes, it is. Um, but you know, the people that thought of the cell, like you know, Robert Hooke, who said this is what cells look like. How did he know that? By the way, um, and he drew it, and like there it is. And then the, then invents the microscope. What? Like like, and he was you know he was crazy. Everyone, oh, they're always we're always crazy. It's not real until it's proven otherwise. So we have a history of doing this and it's like, we should know better by now. We should just say, we don't know instead of it's not real. Um, mm -hmm. But we don't, it's an ego thing, I guess. But like, so this is, yeah, we're never going to be able to prove it. Like you, how do you prove, like, there's no way I can even think of how that would, because no matter what you have, people say, no, there'll, there'll always be someone saying that's fake. It's not real. It's like, these are in, you know, like the results are messed with or something. Um, even if you were able to get, the best evidence, I guess, right? Like always someone's gonna be against it. Um, so maybe that's where faith comes in. I don't know, you know, like maybe we just need to have some faith, but in a different way, not faith in like religion and stuff. There was no, none of that. I didn't see any of that. Now I do think personally that it's what you believe is what you're gonna see when you go over there. Like, I think that it would be traumatic for somebody that is religious to die and not have any of that imagery there. Like that would be a traumatic experience for them. So why would do you it not think they see an image? Like if they were Baptist, then when they die, they'll see who, who would so. they see? Yeah. Jesus, like whatever Jesus, you know, I guess. Right. Like the whole, so they would see Jesus, but then yeah. would that be a, de um, a deception to see I mean, something? No, because, to okay. Wait, wait. Well, no, make because, you comfortable. Okay. Well, no, because our perception is our reality. Right. So, you know, okay. like, do you believe in reincarnation? I am not sure. I mean, I, I guess so. I just don't know exactly like what the purpose of it is like anymore. I there's I've since I've gone down this rabbit hole of like consciousness studies, which I'm in my my grad my second graduate program is in consciousness studies and just learning about this stuff in an academic setting is a lot. What um, what would that be? What is consciousness studies oh in academia? <laughs> oh right. Uh, why are we here? What are we doing here? What are we like? All of that stuff is philosophy. 
So um, it's, it's, it's a lot. We're, we talk about shamanic, like, like shamans and, and all, like everything, all of the, the, all of the cultural experiences experienced by humans that exist on the magical to religious plane and just normal, all of it's, everything's fair game. It's wow. a lot. And it, um, it's been amazing. It's, I've learned so much, um, but it's, it's just, the more you learn, the more questions, the more you need to know, like it's a never ending, I think, quest for information. Um, so yeah, like now, I don't know what reincarnation is now. Like kind of doesn't make sense if we erase our memories. Why are we like, if it, we're supposed to learn, why wouldn't we keep some of that information so we could learn, you know, instead of having to just start all over again, blank slate. Um, that's kind of weird to me, but who knows? Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I know what I went through and I don't know if that's the norm, right? Like, because I wasn't staying. So mm -hmm. if I wasn't staying and I had already planned this out then maybe I didn't go to the place where everybody else goes when they actually die and they're going to stay there. You know, I don't know. Yeah, and if they stay there, they're not going to come back and tell us what right. happened. Right, right, <laughs> right. I mean, they're busy. They're over there. Right. And then like, what are we doing over there? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Um, no clue. But I do know that like, there is definitely lessons here that we're supposed to be doing, like being nice to each other. Like that part, the part that no one can do. The part that yeah, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard? Um, because there's this filter on us of difference, you know, um, that mm -hmm. we have this filter of, of, of not sameness. We have colors, ethnicities, genders, whatever, you know, um, and it's all of these reasons for people to get up in arms about nothing that involves them. And it's stupid. Um, it just, it makes no sense to me at all. Like um, the whole thing about, religion is about love your neighbor love your brother and sister or whatever but like yet we can't do that no one does it everybody's mad about this, like that, and so thing. many wars about religion alone oh i know i mean it's all about that it's it's like the it, it it's just like you guys i hate to break it to you but like we're literally all the freaking same like even on the earth level every person on this earth and animal and everything is 99 percent the same dna like so that one percent differentiates between whether you're a snail or a person like you know and and your skin color and stuff like there's 99 percent exactly the same like what like why can't we get past whatever my neighbor's doing or sleeping with i don't why do you care stop like worry about yourself like seriously like there's so much other stuff you could be doing with your time and like bettering yourself but you know like those things really matter to me now hmm. like being nice i used to be a dick I'll be honest. Like I was not, I didn't care about other people. I didn't, it was all about me, like, you know, and how bad I had it, whatever. Like that is not healthy or conducive to any kind of good life. Like we've got to be um, generative, right? Like Erickson's um, psychosocial development, like you're going to be stagnant or you're going to be generative. Are you going to give it back? Or are you going to be that person that just takes and takes? Like, what's the point of that? You know, like. Sounds like you had so many um, changes that occurred to you since the NDE, mm -hmm. um, not only in your belief system, but, um, professionally, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> probably relationships, daughters. Nope. No. Oh my goodness. My girls. Yeah. But not really personal relationships. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's still my problem area. I don't think I'll ever fix that. Well, I don't know. Trying. Um, but yeah, no, my girls, like my daughter, my oldest one, Ashley, she's 26 now. And, um, she sees how I am with her sister who's eight and she's like and I feel bad because like I was not the best I wasn't the best version when I had her of you know that of myself as I could have been and I didn't do my best and I didn't you know I I should have done better and I didn't um and I I know that and I don't apologize anymore I've done my apologizing but now I just do actions like it's all about and that's the other thing is like put your money where your mouth is like do something don't talk about it like people talk too much about stuff Cheap, yeah. never change it like it's yeah. called you've got to change behavior like um and so that's for the past six years now or however long it's been since that's happened I don't know um I'm bad at math <laughs> um is I've every day made changes um to better myself therapy like whatever I needed to do um has just been taken care of and also putting myself like at a at a as a priority of like my mental health, my like physical well-being, all of that stuff, like 
that is important too because you can't care for other people unless you you yourself are cared for like so that, that's true yeah so yeah have you had any um like are you more clairvoyant since the nde as well would you yeah. say oh yeah yep um what are you doing these days like as far as that goes oh well i mean i read tarot cards i've been reading tarot cards since i was 12 so for freaking 32 years now wow <laughs> um so now i don't use the book like that um at all i i don't have to i guess i i'm not really sure exactly what's happening but um i get like i don't know i hear stuff and i say it and then the people say oh my god how'd you know that i don't know how it works but um i know that that happens like every day um so yeah and i also am i'm now that i admit it it's a lot easier to live with it like my house isn't haunted anymore like it's not like scary stuff happening anymore as soon as i admitted it like okay fine stop go figure that's weird right well someone told me little birdie told me um this lady who does she's like a priestess whatever she's like and they they're doing it because you're ignoring them and they're mad about it like because you they know you can sense them so until you just accept it they're going to keep messing with you so i was like oh all i have to do is say okay fine ghost you're real i admit it and that'll stop and she's like yeah and i'm like uh-huh sure and i didn't listen to her for not like another two years and then finally i was like okay fine and then as soon as i did that i'm in peace i don't have scary nights in my house anymore at all nothing like it's all good so i mean yeah Amazing. really weird but yeah i'm like i'm help like so i help people now with childhood trauma like processing it like when if you've already been to therapy and you've kind of hit that wall where you've done all the therapy you can like you know you you know the you know the ropes about how that works that process works yeah. it's time to go shadow shadow work you know where you take the parts that are so you do tarot yeah. reading and you do shadow work for people mm -hmm. help them yeah so it, from childhood traumas yeah because we can it's easier to have a client like identify with tarot than to say it out loud about what they're problems are it's probably it's usually hard to talk about so it evokes that i think that people sometimes go for tarot readings because they just think it's going to be a fun different thing to do you know right. they, don't, they don't think they're going in some deep dive on right. a trauma for, you know what i mean my clients do so that's the interesting thing before this happened all my clients were like am i going to make out with joe at the theater on friday like those kind of questions where i was like ugh, okay like no offense guys but like seriously um like silly questions right and now i don't get any of those anymore all the people like everybody that comes to me is asking me about serious stuff like really like that kind of stuff like what about life path what am i on the right path like what am i what should i be doing like why did this happen to me kind of stuff like trying to find out and it's weird how it shifted like that yeah it's like the um it's like the people are finding you that need mm -hmm. a better answer right i think so i know you've got a website where people can contact you yep about your tarot reading and your shadow work yep and i also do free the, readings too on youtube so if like people can't afford it like a paid session i do free ones also because i understand that like you know we are in the times we're in um so i want to be accessible to everybody so i do do free live readings on youtube and facebook as well so okay so i'll need i'll put a link to your youtube a link to your website in the video description sure. Yeah, I'm more than happy to do that. They just, you know, just gotta, you know, uh, type in their question when I'm on there, and I'm happy to answer it. You know. Okay, awesome. And then, um, is there any um, final like message from your heart that you'd like to share? Yeah. So two. Number one, be nice. Like, just be nice. Mind your business. Like, seriously, because you've got a lot of stuff. Like, everybody has their own stuff they need to work on. Like, like focus on your own situation before you try to talk about other people's stuff like literally guys just like 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 it's just like adulting 101 like that should just not even be a problem as an adult you should just know that already i don't know what happened like get back to basics like it's about you and your family don't worry about other people um and second is like heal your trauma like guess what we we grew up in a my you know boomer parents whatever they sweep things under the rug all the time sweep it under the rug it goes away it does not go away it will stay with you and it'll keep biting you in the butt until you fix it so like and address it so fix that don't and like change it like stop break the curse the family curse be the person that breaks the curse and do the work that's necessary whatever that is and make sure that your kids 
and going forward and your line is not filled with generational trauma. Like it's a big thing. Like that's why we have so many people that are messed up is because we just ignored all of the problems and pretend they're going to go away. Okay. So like heal your traumas and mind your business. That's it. <laughs> mind your business. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, they say hurt people, hurt people. Right. So generationally, you're just going to keep passing it down. So I, I love that. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing your, your NDE and your, your, all the knowledge that you gained and. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Um, so I do want to say, uh, if anyone likes this kind of content, definitely, um, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, like comment. We love to hear from everyone and, um, we will put the video just, um, in the video description, we'll put a link to, um, your website, Anna Stone's website, and her tarot reading YouTube channel. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, and I hope everyone has a beautiful day. Mm -hmm.